Well, today we have a video which is best described as me doing something dumb because I can and I just really want to see it done. Or maybe I just want to see the world burn in some way. But anyways, in today's video I'm going to try and install Mac OS on the ThinkPad X220 because really, why not? Well, to start off with, I should warn, this video really isn't so much as a guide as it is a bit of an experiment, and I wouldn't follow this as a guide, since I probably did a lot of dumb things. With that said though, if you do want a guide to install macOS on your ThinkPad, I will put a link in the description to the actual guide, as well as how I got a macOS USB setup in Windows. But anyway, on to what I actually did. The first thing that I did, since I don't have a Mac computer around, as most guys request, is download a program called Gib Mac OS. Now, apparently this program is supposed to work on Linux, but for the purposes of this video, I just decided to use Windows, as that's what one of the two guys I was using seemed to be using. Also, it seems slightly easier, maybe. I then proceeded to download an installer of High Sierra using this program. Why not Mojave? Well, one, it seems to need um, a little more hacking to get working on this hardware, and B, Mojave did not work when I tried it on this hardware. Maybe someone actually interested in getting this to work could do so, but I don't mind High Sierra for the purposes of this experiment, as it's still extremely well supported. Then, once the download had completed, I went ahead and proceeded to write the macOS installer to a USB, also using Gib macOS, but with the make install script. This then proceeded to write macOS uh, to the USB, uh, the exact copy of macOS that was just downloaded from Apple, and it then also installed Clover. After that was done, I went ahead and copied a special install of Clover that had settings as well as various other things just for the X220. I downloaded this um, from the site that had the guide on it and I copied it to the USB's EFI partition replacing the install of Clover that was already there. After that was done I went ahead and removed the USB from my Windows machine, inserted it into my ThinkPad and booted from it. Once I had successfully booted from the USB I went ahead and selected my Mac OS installer from within the Clover bootloader. Then, from within the installer, I went ahead and formatted my drive and went through the first part of the macOS installer. Once that was done, I went ahead and rebooted, still using the USB this time, but in the Clover menu, I selected my newly installed macOS on the internal hard drive, at which point it successfully booted, and the second part, the macOS installation, began. Once that uh, completed, I once again booted from the USB and selected my internal hard drive within Clover, and once again, booting was a success, and I was able to get macOS set up and running, put in all my usual details during the sort of um, setup menu in macOS and it booted to the macOS desktop. Once I got to the macOS desktop I went ahead and mounted my EFI partition and copied the EFI partition from the USB to it and then I proceeded to reboot this time from the internal drive which once again booted successfully without the help of the USB. Upon booting from the internal drive, however, I realized my audio was not working, which is when I realized I'd forgot to run the install kex script. So I went ahead and mounted my EFI partition again, ran it, and did a few other pieces of macOS Hackintosh wizardry that would also require a reboot, but enable the hardware and various other things to work far better. I then went ahead and rebooted and everything seemed to work fine, audio and all. It was at this point that I started to experiment. 
the first thing that I did is I wanted to see if Apple's consumer video editor would work without Mel, which yes, it did. iMovie works fine and performance is actually semi-decent. Another thing I tried was to test performance generally. Honestly, it's pretty good. Everything that you would want to work kind of does. Um, the main thing I tried was like web browsing, which works perfectly, even to the point where HD video playback on the web browser is working. The last thing I decided to try, which I was kind of curious about, was the ThinkPad dock, which I wasn't 100% expecting it to work, but it actually did. However, the audio jack actually on the dock was not working, but I suppose the solution to that was just plug in the headphones directly to the laptop while docked. Uh, also, the DVD drive was sadly not working as well. Well, that concludes everything I did with this ThinkPad X220 and Mac OS. So really, my finishing thoughts are, yeah, this does work. The only thing that doesn't really work is the built-in Wi-Fi, although note that this can be made to work by replacing the Wi-Fi card and installing a modified BIOS to bypass the whitelist. Another thing that doesn't work is obviously, as I said, the ThinkPad dock, audio jack, and DVD drive, and a few things on macOS, such as Metal and Continuity, don't work as well. Also, I couldn't make night shift work, but apparently it's supposed to, so your mileage may vary there. So in conclusion, if you want macOS on a ThinkPad X220, here and now, as everything is, you can do that. Although, I don't really see why you would, since any advantage macOS could have over Linux or even Windows is kind of lost on this machine, as it doesn't have particularly powerful hardware. But, I suppose if you want to change or just really like macOS, or maybe want to run macOS on a really nice piece of hardware, this does work, and maybe, just maybe, it's for you. Ugh, just where did I put that Linux USB? It's time to get macOS uninstalled. Also, as a quick side note, I was eventually able to get Mojave running on the ThinkPad X220. It took a little bit of messing around and I kind of had to deviate from the main guide to do that in order to get it to work correctly. And true to the guide, it doesn't work quite as well as High Sierra does on the X220, but if you want to run Mojave, that is an option too, and it seems to work fairly well. 